<laughs> what, what about radioactive elements? Mm, radioactive elements are touchy. I haven't tried any of that because I don't like playing with radioactive elements. Um, I will tell you this. I don't know if I've said it before in a lecture or not, but uh, radioactivity, everything, conductivity, radioactivity, magnetism, comes down to crystal and geometrical structure. Nikola Tesla theorized that radioactivity was a manifestation of cosmic rays interacting with, with let's say, uranium. A, a radioactive rock um, was, uh, radiation was the result of cosmic rays interacting with it, and if we could shield it properly, the radiation would go away. So a friend of his didn't agree with this at all and wanted to prove him wrong. About 20 years later, he had the opportunity, and they were drilling one of the deepest, deepest holes on the entire planet. I think they went down 18,000 feet, and this gentleman was involved with it. He wanted to prove Tesla wrong, and so he took a radioactive, powerful radioactive sample and strapped a, 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 a counter probe to it and lowered it down into this hole. When he got down about 16,000 feet, and the meter that they've got up there is just buzzing, because it's right next to the sample, you get down 16,000 feet, and it turns off. What that shows is that the crystalline structure of the metal is, is interacting with the rays that are hitting the planet, and when it got down to about 16,000 feet, it was no longer interacting with those rays anymore. And it wasn't a matter of a cord getting disconnected? No, nope, no. Nope. When they pulled it back up, hit about, uh, actually they got it back up and it stopped buzzing and it took about two hours for that sample to start generating radiation again. Hmm. So it has everything to do with energy coming in, which actually tells us something very interesting. If we can create, I mean that's radio, that's, that's energy coming out of that, that sample. If we can find the proper crystalline geometrical structure, Mike Waddell is actually working on this in, in, a, in a little bit different way, we, we can actually you know, we could actually create a plate or a substance with the proper crystalline structure that take, that make all the energy we could ever want from cosmic radiation, cosmic rays. Okay, um, the day-night solar cell is an example of this. So just something to just something to experiment with. So that's why um, we can remediate nuclear radiation with proper Brown's gas, not the not the, the weak stuff, but the good stuff. Um, it dis it. Um, changes the entire crystalline structure of the material so that it is no longer responding to the cosmic rays. Uh, we did an experiment with uh, some cold electricity stuff that you know, we, we, we hooked up a cold electricity generator to a uh, caduceus wand and we ran it over some powerful uh, um, alpha radiation samples and it would, they completely, uh, all the radiation went away for about 30 minutes. So, and then it slowly came back. So there's different ways to do it. Um, radiation is not the boogeyman that, uh, uh, that the governments and the universities and highbrow people of the world would like us to believe it is. I mean, it's dangerous, don't get me wrong, but you can get rid of it in many different ways, but that's another story entirely. I'm sorry, I digress a lot. Let's uh, summarize. I've got seven okay. minutes left on my battery. I've okay. got more on my tape, but... Um, in this setting since it'll be hard to get back into the setting. Yes, exactly. Let's go ahead and wrap it up, uh, uh -huh. kind of describing the process and, and the mechanisms, okay. and uh, give us a take-home lesson. What we are doing is we are utilizing a uh, hydrogen electrolysis cell, just like this, well, wet cell versus dry cell, but same principle, we're using a hydrogen electrolysis cell we are seeding it with elements. We use the, the hydrogen and oxygen that comes off for whatever purposes we want, whether it be power or heat generation. And our byproduct that's going to collect in the bottom as, uh, as the more we run is elements that we seed it with. And what we are looking at is the ability to take hydrogen and oxygen, imprint a template on them, and order the energy into physical reality literally electricity becoming, uh, becoming physical reality. And if, and if we want to you know, debate numbers, uh, I'll just throw this out there. In one cubic centimeter of the vacuum, there exists enough energy to power the United States for an entire year. 
So if we are working with the implosion and the, and the changes of hydrogen and oxygen that we experience in a, in a hydrolysis cell, how much energy are we actually playing with from the vacuum? So, so that's so what I'd like to leave you with. Basically an elemental copy machine? Elemental copy machine is a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. Powered by the motors of the universe. So there we go. Any final um, questions from the audience before we... Does it still uh, act as a copier if you don't ignite the gas? Oh, you don't have to ignite the gas. No, not, I'm never igni I'm not igniting any of this. No, you're still storing it for future use. Well, I, that's that's uh, but that's over here in this system. I can I I have just bled this off, just into the atmosphere. What, one, go ahead. When you say salt water, would you say like salt seawater or just sodium chloride that we I use as table salt? Thank you for for asking that. I would not recommend using straight salt water. I would only use seawater. Um, I'm going to build an entirely different machine to use seawater in because I don't want to run. I don't want to mess this one up. I like playing with it for other, with all my other stuff. Um, only seawater, saltwater brine from <coughs> oil wells, uh, the Great Salt Lake water. Great Salt Lake is a fantastic source of very interesting elements. Um, never, never straight salt water. Salt water, you're going to pour off a huge amount of, of chlorine gas and uh, really bad stuff. So thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for clarifying that. OK. Any other final comments, questions? Well, so it's a century, what, he, what he says. Go ahead, Al. you actually measure the amount of gas that comes off versus the number, the, the, the ounces of water that you're disassociating, you have far more hydrogen and oxygen than is in the ounce of water. Yeah, thank you. I didn't so, even talk so the hydrogen and oxygen is also alchemical? Hydrogen and oxygen, um, there are... It's a, it's on the back of your hand, you do the calculations. You, you, you mentioned how much hydrogen you were getting off. Uh -huh. And you talked a little bit. You just, he just said, well, there's not much water. Right, right. Not, not much water. If you do back on the back of your hand, you can do the calculations. Uh -huh. How much is a mole of water? in hydrogen and oxygen, it's well known, and then you can measure the hydrogen and oxygen that you have. Yeah, I was I, I completely forgotten about that. <laughs> it's but, about 16 times. Yeah. yeah. And that was the thing, it was Kanarev's articles about... Uh, mm -hmm. So is it possible that the electrolysis of the water is not necessarily the crucial ingredient, but that the, it sets up a context of copying? That includes copying the water, the uh, the hydrogen and oxygen, and whatever other elements are in the water. More to support what he says, the Japanese uh, uh, nuclear physicist, and forgive me, I've forgotten his name. He was responsible for their uh, the nuclear regulatory agency in uh, in Japan. He ran their, their laboratory. He got talked into doing this, and so he ran the test took iron electrodes, just straight iron electrodes, 999 pure, and did exactly what you done, took the water, measured the amount of hydrogen and oxygen, and when he got far more than <laughs> it was supposed, then uh, they spent three or four pages in the article trying to say what was happening at the molecular level. Mm. When they got through, there was no conclusion. <laughs> this is one of three or four different possible ways, but they. Well, go ahead. All right. So well, we're almost out of time. I, I'd like to. I'd like to finish that. Train, bring it back here yes. real quick. Yes. Um, water separates into steam at 1,800 to one volume. Okay, so one liter of water will create 1,800 liters of steam. Good Brown's gas will, and so we use that as a rule of thumb. <coughs> And then that's, that's where these figures come from, what we would expect to find. But good Brown's gas can produce much, much more volume than just the 1,800 to 1. So that's what we're saying. Where is that coming from? I completely forgotten about that word. Exactly. Um, it proves exactly what yeah, you're saying. Exactly. So um, this device, uh, as, as was mentioned earlier, this device produces about um, 20 liters of, of gas an hour. And so it's not a huge volume, but over time, 20 liters of gas an hour for an eight-hour sunny day, definitely enough uh, gas.
gas to cook, cook meals and maybe even heat a house if you're, uh, or I'm, and I'm gonna use it to heat my shop this summer or this winter. So um, there are many, many facets of this and many applications and, and I encourage everybody to jump in feet first and experiment with it and see where it goes. Because as we've seen from Al and other people that have talked uh, uh, this week and, and uh, there are other experiments, this is being proved out over and over again. Now it's time to actually focus on it and see where we can take it because water is the future of this planet. If we don't find ways to more effectively utilize our water, you know, we're not, we're not gonna make it. So thank you very much for all your time and everything. Thanks for being here and the questions. <laughs> Thanks. But uh, radioactivity, everything, conductivity, radioactivity, magnetism, comes down to crystal and geometrical structure. Nikola Tesla theorized that Radioactivity was a manifestation of cosmic rays interacting with, with let's say, uranium. A, a radioactive rock um, was, uh, radiation was the result of cosmic rays interacting with deepest holes on the entire planet. I think they went down 18,000 feet, and this gentleman was involved with it. He wanted to prove Tesla wrong, and so he took a radioactive, powerful radioactive sample and strapped a... Uh, a <laughs> what, what about radioactive elements? Mm, radioactive elements are touchy. I haven't tried any of that because I don't like playing with radioactive elements. Um, I will tell you this, I don't know if I've said it before in a lecture or not, that if we could shield it properly, the radiation would go away. So a friend of his didn't agree with this at all and wanted to prove him wrong. About 20 years later, he had the opportunity and they were drilling one of the deepest 